Yerev Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live here. We got a very disturbing article that came out on Israel National News today. Iran nuclear crisis uh, regarding here. The, the title of the article is Iran Army Commander will keep arming until Israel is overthrown. That's a statement that he actually made. Actually, he says destroyed in his own statement there. Uh, this was actually, uh, it says here in the article, one of Iran's top military commanders has said the Islamic Republic will continue to bolster its military capabilities until Israel is destroyed and Palestine, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, and Palestinian Arab state established in its place. They're not even looking for a two-state solution. They want Israel totally annihilated. Uh, Brigadier General Moshe uh, Kazmani, a senior commander in the Islamic Revolution Guard Corps, was speaking to soldiers during a military drill in Tehran Wednesday. Uh, uh, they, speaking of the U.S. and Zionists, should know that the Islamic Revolution will continue enhancing in, uh, its preparedness until it overthrows Israel and liberates Palestine, uh, Gazami, Gazamini said, according to the semi-official uh, Fars News Agency. He also indicated Iran would continue its military interventions in surrounding countries, including Syria, Iraq, and Yemen, where Iranian proxies and special forces are deeply involved in bloody wars. And that's kind of interesting, coming right out admitting what they're doing. Of course, Saudi Arabia trying to, to uh, stop the Houthis in uh, Yemen. But you have to remember, Saudi Arabia is really fighting a war against Iran, which would be something that would probably be detrimental to the country if Iran really up and attacks them directly. But Iran seems to always be a little bit of a chicken in the background, just attacking the nations uh, and not getting directly involved, just as they're trying to get the, uh, the uh, Hamas uh, to go against Israel. They're trying to get uh, the Hezbollah from Lebanon to go against Israel. See, they don't want to really get into the fight themselves, but the time will come that they're going to get into the fight. Uh, he made the comment while he was speaking during a major drill involving some 250,000 Basia parliamentary fighters as Iran's leaders nervously prepare for the possibility of a military strike by Israel if the nuclear deal signed uh, with Western states be formally implemented. Uh, um, it's formally implemented. Well, then that is obviously certainly coming. We got a, uh, also in another news t today, this was on Al Jazeera. Uh, it says Obama gains enough Senate support to protect the Iran deal. Very uh, serious article here. U.S. President Barack Obama has earned sufficient congressional uh, backing to ins ensure the inter international deal to roll back Iran's nuclear program goes into effect. Bar uh, Barbara Mikulski, uh, she was the one from Maryland, became the 34th senator to announce her support for the accord uh, and, and Wednesday, which means any attempt by the U.S. Congress to halt the deal will fail. The agreement would ease punishing economic sanctions on Tehran and will prevent Iran from advancing its nuclear program. You know, what is in the mind of senators that are, that are uh, Iran not only calling for Israel's total annihilation, and yet we have such a foolish president and administration, the Barack Obama administration there in power in the United States that would actually push for a deal like this, knowing, you know, it's, it's clear, I should say then, that Israel is not America's ally any longer. They have been totally abandoned. And yet at the same time, while the president is making this wonderful deal with Iran so that they can end up getting nuclear weapons in the long run, uh, then he takes and he goes against the, uh, the very country, Russia, who had been building a very good relationship with the United States uh, and, and really doing very well, as well as Russia had built a great uh, relationship with the European Union. They were doing great trade between Germany, France, and, and other nations there. But for some reason, I guess the Pope of Rome decided that NATO needed to come against Russia. They needed to take Ukraine. So the United States gets involved in this uh, uh, and creates a conflict in Ukraine, overthrows the government there, and then turn around and slaps Russia, supposedly their ally, and a nation that is not calling for the destruction of Israel, nor are they calling the uh, United States their greatest enemy. In fact, since the Cold War, it had been a tremendously good relationship that was being built between President Barack Obama and, 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 and even with former President Bush there with Russia. But now the West, with the current administration, Barack Obama, has certainly did an about face with Russia and is completely, completely undermined that relationship and causing a nation that is a major world power to become 
uh, the United States' enemy. And interestingly enough, Russia has still been withholding and holding back, not wanting to escalate any of this situation, and at the same time watching their former citizens in the Ukraine, the Russian-speaking people, where over 90% in East Ukraine, as well as Crimea, are Russians, Russian-speaking people there, and very loyal to Russia to begin with, and they have watched a genocide take place. It is horrendous. You can go online and just look up the bodies, the civilian deaths that are in eastern Ukraine. It is appalling to see what Kiev has done along with uh, NATO supporting, arming, and even fighting alongside their troops with special forces. And yet, the United States wants to slap sanctions on Russia and then puts uh, the European Union nations under threat if they don't do it. So, very sad. And yet, Iran calling for America as their number one enemy and the destruction of Israel. And of course, President Barack Obama pats them on the back and gives them a nice green light to go and make your nuclear bombs. Something is definitely wrong with this picture. Anyway, in other news as well, uh, very interesting article here that came out here. Uh, uh, this, this is in response to Ms. Kim Davis, who refuse to, do, to, to give licenses to gay couples in Kentucky. Uh, she has defied the U.S. Uh, 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 Supreme Court's ruling on making gay marriage legal across the United States and refusing to do so. And one thing that has really, really surprised me, and I, I think if you are voting, this man is worthy of your support. And that's Mike Huckabee came to this woman's aid. And I've noticed this with Mike Huckabee. He is not afraid to speak his conviction. He has fully supported Israel. No bones about it. He doesn't skirt around and play politics when it comes to Israel. And even in this case here with gay marriage, he has, stands his ground. Uh, he doesn't do like most politicians who want to appeal to the Christian community and, and kind of say, well, 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 uh, uh, you know, the nice people there, but we shouldn't be against the gay community. And I'm not against people as an individual. If this is the lifestyle they want, th so be it. That's, that's their privilege. They can do that, you see. But it is still sin and it's still wrong and it's not a healthy or a godly way to be. And I have respect for Mike Huckabee being willing to stand against it and in support of this uh, precious lady here, Miss Davis, in, in defying this court order. It says here, Republican presidential hopeful Mike Huckabee, and by the way, this is on Newsmax. Uh, you can catch us on Israeli News Live, our Facebook page. It says, uh, supports a Kentucky clerk's refusal to issue marriage licenses because of her opposition to same-sex uh, marriage. In a statement, Huckabee says he spoke Wednesday morning with Kim Davis to offer prayers and support. Kim Davis has refused to issue the licenses in Rowan County, Kentucky, since the Supreme Court's decision in June to legalize gay marriage nationwide. A federal judge has since ordered her specifically to comply. I would quit. I wouldn't do it. Davis calls her refusal a heaven or hell decision. Huckabee is an ordained Southern Baptist minister and a favorite of social conservatives. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul also has expressed support for Davis among other GOP rivals. Carly Farini and Lindsey Graham have said she should comply with the law. They have no backbone whatsoever. No backbone. What, what a disgrace. You know, it's another thing too, and I'm not sure, but I'm sure Mike Huckabee is probably against abortion as well. But let me just tell you something about abortion. You know, years ago in, in, the biblical, in biblical times, God sent Moses under the Pharaoh's regime. And what did, what did Pharaoh do? See, Satan come upon that Pharaoh and he tried to kill all the children two years old and down, trying to get that anointed child and have him murdered. Then when Yeshua came on the scene, Herod, that Roman general there also took and killed all the children two years old and under in order to try to get Mashiach. And I believe that abortion was actually legalized, that Satan came upon these Supreme Court people to legalize abortion back in the early 60s. Why? Because he knew that the time was drawing near, that the two witnesses who, would be, who were going to have the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon them to bring the judgment on the end of the world would be born into this world. And he put out abortion trying to stop and kill wherever they were. But by God's grace, 
It couldn't be stopped. See, Satan knows that Jeremiah the prophet spoke that said that the Lord said to him, I ordained you a prophet of the nations from your mother's womb. So therefore he knows if he can kill the child in the womb, he could stop it if he could get the right one. So he had this mass murder going on throughout the nations against the children. And it is deplorable. You know, I know there's many women that have done this that have had tremendous regret for that. And my heart and prayer is for you because I know that many women are suffering from these different things here. Pressure, whatever case may have come upon you in life that caused you to do it, or later you became a Christian and you regretted it. Yeshua does forgive even this crime here. He forgives it. He wants you to repent because he also wants you to meet the child that was in your womb, the child that is waiting for you to name it. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening.